Hello and welcome to another episode of What's Inside. Today we're looking at a vintage copy of Dragon Hunt. Uh, it's an Avalon Hill game. Um, supposed to be pretty cool. This is very old. That's, well, as far as today's standards go. It's a bookcase game. Um, what year was this? 1982. Made in Baltimore, Maryland from Avalon Hill, which later got absorbed into Wizards of the Coast and uh, therefore into um, Hasbro. I doubt you're going to ever see it reprinted though, which is really sad. A lot of these games were pretty fun. Avalon Hill had some really cool war games and they were trying to kind of catch on with the fantasy market and bring people back to war games, but it, a lot of times it didn't really work. But this is supposed to be a really fun game. I haven't had a chance to play it in a long, long time. This one's supposed to be complete, so let's see what we got here. All right, we got some cards. We got a whole mess of tokens. Oh, the recommendation mailer. An advertisement for the general. That was their magazine. The general was cool. If you like war games, especially ones that use these chits, um, the general had a game in just about every issue. They started that at some point in the run, and they never stopped. And they had a, a free game in every issue, and that was really cool, but it was very expensive at the time. As it is now, you can usually track these down for 10 to 20 bucks, but they had a game in every issue, which is pretty cool, I think. And there's a price list, a little catalog here, for all their parts and pieces and magazines and whatnot, the micro games, or micro computer games, sports games, there's order form, pretty neat. Uh, they had a lot of games back then. They were the company to get your war game from. We got two dice, a red one and a white one. And they're, oh, that was a good roll. Uh, the box tends to split on these just because they're so old. So be aware of that, that the box probably is going to be in some trouble. Uh, especially because these were heavy boards. Uh, like this one's split along the seam there. Don't be surprised if they're like that. I'm kind of surprised this one's in this good of shape because it's just the one corner. The lid's in decent shape. You can see there's some warping where the the cover is actually like glued on top of a, a blank box, uh, as you can see here. So um, there will be discoloration and warping on these, but the corners are the primary thing you got to really worry about um, because the corners will be split. And it's kind of hard to replace the bo the boxes. Uh, usually they're sunk in too from other things sitting on top of them. So here we have the rule book. Shockingly it's in color. Um, but it, it's just a color cover I think. So you got your basic information here. It's just a, like an 8.5 by 11 page. And it goes on for several pages uh, given the different values. The staples on this one are a little rusty. That's pretty common. Uh, it hasn't discolored the paper yet, but usually it doesn't take much to get to that point. Um, different things about monsters and stuff like that. It's, it's about 15 pages, plus your chart on the back on page 16, which is just a quick reference sheet. Alright, let's look at the, the board here. On the back it's yellow for some reason, but this is a fairly large map. It folds weird too because there's the seams down the center, but it doesn't fold up all one way, which is probably good because it keeps it from warping too much. Now, there's a in the center here we have the layer of brimstone, and there's different places to visit around the map. You've got different castles to go to. Uh, your dragon cards go here, and the dragon discards go there. So everything is located very conveniently. It's got direction up here. Um, there's an image of the dragon. It's a very simple board, not a lot going on. It's actually not even that big of a board. Uh, these are regular hex size. So, um, but it, it is a, f a reasonably long game as I recall. I think this one takes about an hour to play. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. And I don't see it on the box. Oh yeah, uh, ages 10 and up, playing time is 1 to 2 hours. So, um, the board does fold up. These seams are pretty old, so be careful to fold it the correct way. Because it is one of these 
larger boards. So uh, be careful with the board, it, it will come apart fairly easy. Those seams weren't built real well back then. Now let's get that stuff out of the way. All right, now the bits and pieces that you're probably gonna end up wanting to look for are going to be the, um, the monster stuff here. We got like flamed, paralyzer, dispenser trolls. Um, there's really no inventory sheet, which is a little disappointing. Let's see if it says on here. All right, there should be 24 dragon cards. 36 movement cards, 6 per player, 6 hero counters, um, 6 mage sword counters, 1 per player of course, 12 sniper counters, 72 knight counters, 144 man at arms counters, 10 fantastic beast counters, 2 being controlled markers, 4 flame markers, 18 dragon wound markers, 12 magic defense markers, 2 dragon counters, 6 dragon parts counters, 1 game board, 2 6 sided die. A few extra dragon wound markers and magic defense markers have been added to the counter mix for your convenience. Now the hero tokens are actually a little larger than the others um, and should be in here somewhere. Yeah, uh, this one's purple. They're numbered at least they're supposed to be and they're different colors is my understanding of it um, don't remember yeah uh, they have a five up in the corner and this one's like orange there's a purple one I think the rest are in the other bags but there's different color tokens uh, the man at arms here are green there's also orange for uh, Oh, the knights are in there too, and so are the snipers. But they're just different colors for each player. Yellow, orange, brown, or tan, whatever. A light blue, um, purple, and green. And these white ones are wound markers. Um, then you've got like different weapons here, and different little icons and stuff. So everything is pretty explained in here. You got your hero token, sword, different things there. Um, man, arms, knight, sniper, wounds. Honestly, if you're missing some of these, you could probably copy them out of here and uh, uh, replace them that way, at least some of them. So let's get this stuff out of the way and we'll look at the cards real quick. Alright, so we have dragon cards, and then we have the movement cards. There's different colors for each player. So let's look at like purple. We got a 9, a 12, a 7, an 8, 11, 10. Orange, same basic setup same numbers everything so yeah one there's one two three four five six sets of these and each person's gonna have six cards so not real complicated all the cards are basically the same move those over the dragon cards though uh, this one is Brimstone is wounded. He kills all pieces in your attacking force. Brimstone flames your home cottage. Do or die. Brimstone attacks a village of your choice. Brimstone attacks a castle of your choice. Do or die. Brimstone attacks your castle. Brimstone flames your home cottage. Brimstone kills all pieces adjacent to him and returns to his lair. Do or die. 
After killing all pieces adjacent to Brimstone, uh, all, after killing all pieces adjacent, Brimstone yawns and returns to his lair for a nap. He will sleep until the end of the next round, losing all movement unless he is attacked. Uh, Brimstone attacks three pieces of your choice and returns to his lair. Brimstone is wounded. He kills two attackers and flies six spaces in a random direction. Brimstone kills two attackers and returns to his lair wounded. Brimstone attacks your village. Brimstone kills two attackers. Brimstone flies six spaces, random direction. Brimstone attacks a cottage of your choice. If the defender does not roll a 10 or higher, the cottage is flamed. Do or die. Brimstone fl uh, moves five spaces of your choice. Brimstone kills all pieces in your attacking force. Brimstone is wounded. Enraged, he kills every unit that is within two spaces. Brimstone is wounded. He kills all pieces adjacent to him. And lastly, Brimstone wounds all pieces in your attacking force. Now these cards are fairly thin, actually. They're kind of kind of cheap. They're just thin card stock. Not particularly good quality. Uh, the back pitcher's okay. Not really going to complain about that. Uh, but all the cards are a little, a little thin. A uh, little cheap. But overall, it's, it's a classic game. It's uh, actually fairly hard to find complete. And in the, the original box, um, it is fairly old. It's from 1982, so it's, it's pretty old. It's over 30 years now. But it's, it's one of those games that Avalon Hill put out when they were trying to cash in on the fantasy craze. And it's one of the better fantasy uh, chip pieces that they put out. Uh, this one, a Wizard Quest, I remember liking both of those quite a bit. So I'd recommend if you can find this, if you like war games and you like fantasy stuff, you'll probably dig it. And you can play it with two people. You don't really need six people to play it. It's more fun with more people, of course, but um, it's a complexity rating of 3 on 1 to 10. So it's not a very complicated game, and you could probably get younger people to play it too. Uh, it is 10 and up, so I don't. I think younger people would probably enjoy this a little more, but the older gamers that are into the more vintage stuff would definitely dig it. But that's Dragon Hunt. It's one word in the title, um, so when you're searching for it, if you're on one of those sites that makes it be more specific, try and put it in as one word. And it is by Avalon Hill. Hopefully someday it does get re-released because Hasbro does own all of Avalon Hill stuff, so maybe maybe we'll get lucky. But until then, that'll do it for this episode. As always, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you next time on What's Inside.